Hello food and drink fans, welcome back to Cooking with Jim. With me, James May, and chef Johnny Sutcliffe of the Roy Swallowcliffe, just off the A30 between Shaftesbury and Salisbury. It's excellent. Today we're looking at a staple of Southeast Asia, fish and chips. Now, normally you will have seen in pubs you have beer battered fish and chips. Today we're going to make gin battered beer. No, fish. <laughs> gin battered beer. That would be tremendous. Normally when you go to a pub, you will see on the menu gin battered. No, you won't. You'll see beer battered. <laughs> well, we're going to make gin battered fish and chips. How do we do that? Bit of trial and error, I reckon. What we're going to do, we're going to do some soda water and gin. More like a tempura-ish kind of style batter. The alcohol, the way it works and when you fry it, it expands and that's how you get crispy. Now. And normally you do this with... Ale and lager, we use, do a mix. We're using soda water because um, it's got bubbles in it, which essentially we need, we need the gas, which you'd have from lager normally. I yeah. should point out that the regular beer battered fish and chips served in the Oak Swallow Cliff, just off the A30 between Shaftesbury and Salisbury, with very reasonably priced rooms, dogs welcome, um, is famously light and crispy. It's uh, one of the pub's specialities. It's one of our pub classics. So this has to be at least as good as that. Otherwise, it can't go on the menu. Right, um, okay, so what we've got in here is just self-raising flour and a bit of salt. That's it. And then we're gonna add some soda water just to loosen it. Do you put an egg in this, or is that only fish and chip shop batter that does that? Theirs is powdered, I think. Oh dear. Powdered batter, usually. So do you think you'll be able to taste, I, I realise the gin will have an effect on the batter, but will you actually be able to taste the spices and the pasta? I'm not too sure, because um, it's a very quick process. So we're gonna add some some gin in there, probably that much. See? Expensive. And that's the sort of consistency you're looking for. Sort of kind of the texture, kind of double cream. Oh, again, you can smell the. You can um, smell the gin now. Yeah, it's yeah. not surprising. This is you just put about <laughs> thirty quid. Worth, isn't it? Right, and then um, yes, plain flour and salt, pepper, and we've got a nice, lovely, thick piece of cod. How long does it take to cook? Five uh, minutes. About five minutes. Yeah. Now we have an excellent test for this because um, on t'other camera here is Lucy Brown who likes fish and chips and usually there is something that she does like but she hates gin. So I think Lucy Brown should try gin battered fish and chips and mushy peas. Up to that? Yep. How often do you get hit in the eyeball by a bit of fat? It's happens quite a bit. <laughs> it's going to be very pale. Beer batter is, is sort of yellowy, almost orange. I like it, it looks elegant as a pale <laughs> batter. It looks healthier. It's very pale. And that temperature is uh, 175? 175, yeah. So not too hot, I think. I think we'll go too hot, you do, we fry about 180. And you've done some chips. The standard hand-cut chips that we do here. And some mushy peas. They're not technically mushy, they're crushed. So they're not marrow fats? They're not marrow fats, no. They're I mean, posh peas smashed posh. up. Yeah. Yeah. You've done the fat chips for this one? Yeah. Just traditionally with yeah, traditionally we would. Whenever I come to the pub, I always annoy them by ordering the thin chips. To say, Kez, who's waiting at the table, I say, can I have the thin chips? She says, yes, I'm sure you can. And then she walks up and I hear from the kitchen, fuck's sake! <laughs> for that in the distance. I quote that that doesn't happen. It doesn't, actually. I completely made that up. Oh, look at this. So when you, do you let it drain for a bit? Yeah, we let it drain for a good couple of minutes just to get rid of all the... Should we get Chris? Do you think Chris would like to try this? Yeah. Seeing as it's a, I mean, it is a proper Yorkshire, I mean, it's not a Yorkshire dish, but it's very popular in Yorkshire. I used to live there, so I can say that with some authority. Absolutely. So I think Chris, as well as Lucy Brown, would be a good test. You're very up for eating gin battered fish and chips. I'll go, if you can excuse me, I'll go and find t Chris. Chris! Dove Chris. Chris! As you're a Yorkshireman, I want to, I want to see what your opinion on, so gin battered fish is going to be light. Do you want the longest opinion? Yes, of course. You put a little bit of baked sea salt on the top. We can very reasonably put a slice of lemon with this as well as it's Absolutely. Cute. You should go first. Okay. Unadulterated, don't, don't put any tartar sauce on it. I think it's very, very crispy. Very crispy? That's at least as crispy as the regular beer batter, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. delicious. Taste um, of gin? Maybe not so much. <laughs> the gin has informed the quality Absolutely. of the batter. Okay. 
I mean, it is extremely it. crispy and light. How could I have made a mess of just putting some fish on a fork? Wow. I can't actually tell if I can taste gin, but I can definitely taste No, but you taste, can taste something. Oh, actually, no, here it comes. Yeah, there's something. There is. No, the gin flavour has somehow gone into the fish. Chris, a Yorkshireman's opinion. So put all thoughts of Whitby out of your head. Will it stand up to the magic of Whitby? Well, it's a big ask. It tastes fine. Fine? That tastes really good. I think the gin... There's a little bit at the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's, really, that's... Yeah. Well, and I think... Like the, an aftertaste. And the gin actually sort of... It gives the, the, the flesh of the fish a slightly drier flavour. Yeah, yeah. Success. I would say so. I'd say that tastes yeah. up. But let's try it on Lucy Brown, who loves fish and chips but hates Very gin. Good. You'll have to shout, Lucy, because you're not um, you're not mic'd up. I'll try. Put a decent sized bit in your face, don't you? To make that what noise you get on countdown. I like it. Ray! Amazing! I can't, I can't really taste the gin. Do you not just wait a couple of seconds? Do you not get the sort of slightly slightly dry and astringent gin finish to the flesh of the fish. No? Can you just edit that bit out? Uh, I have the fish and chips in this pub quite often. I like it immensely. I'd be very pleased to have this as well. It is expensive to make, yeah. because even if we don't bottle the gin for you, and we don't, you know, we don't have to ship it to you, I can just bring it round. We can't get out of paying the duty, which is the, the bulk of the cost of the gin. So this would be expensive fish and chips. Would you put it on the menu? I think we could do something, yeah. Maybe putting the fish in a bit of gin beforehand, possibly, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe, or what if, um, as, a, as a summer thing, you did some sort of Japanese-style tempura vegetables. Yeah, that would work really well. Like some asparagus yeah. or something, but with that... Yeah, that batter. Batter. I wouldn't Thank take the regular fish and chips off the menu, because no. they're very popular, but you could maybe have, as an alternative, pay a small premium yeah. for the exclusive gin-battered cod and chips and mushy peas. Thank you for watching. In the next episode, we're going to make mussels. Mussels and, yeah. Way. If you would like to buy James Gin Asian Parsnip and do your own gin cooking experiments, the bottle is available online, link in the description below. Personally, I just drink it. What next? Like, comment, subscribe.